Greetings, this is Mr. Solomon with another edition of Minecraft EDU for Schools. This is the day before our fall break, so we're going to do a little build battle with students. This is the first time they're using Minecraft this year. Build battles usually include teams of two to four people, or you could work individually. Students are going to a large workspace, so they'll all go to the same work area. I've given them a specific time limit, 30 minutes to build, and they have to work together. And so what we're going to work on is building a jack-o'-lantern leaving that open-ended so students can be creative and decide how they would like to build their jack-o'-lantern. We always go over the rules of Minecraft. Students are required to sign in with their first name and the computer number where they're sitting. That makes it easy for me to find them. Rule number five is also one we talk about. Don't destroy or attack other players. They have to work together. And reminding them that they're not allowed to use weapons, potions, or armor because they will be playing in creative mode. And then we go over the controls for students that need some help. So, we have a fourth grade class, so I'm going to sign in as a teacher. I have a password for that, and then I just connect. And so as we get into the game, I'm going to turn on uh, build mode. Let me teleport myself back by pressing the letter M. Pressing the M key is going to let me move fast. I always like to go to build mode, turn that on as well make sure that's checked and then I can start flying up in the sky. So, once students had their 30 minute time limit was up, we then gathered on the floor and started looking at everyone's creation. So, this was a good start. This is a good example of making something that's almost too big for the time that you had, so they didn't quite finish. This one they said they were uh, puking up slime is how the students put it. That's what that green stuff is for that pumpkin. So some good creativity going on. So now we're going to look at groups 9 through 16. The large workspace has border blocks built all around it so students cannot leave these areas once they teleport into them. I've used this uh, template for lots of different projects. Uh, here's one that looks more like a house. And if we go in, we can look inside the house. You can see they've got some spider webs around, making it look creepy. Okay, and then here's another one. Okay, so there's our house. I didn't quite finish the mouth. If we go inside though, we can look around and see. Okay, so there's two groups, 9 through 17. Most students were working in groups of three and four. There were very little groups, very few, that were only working in pairs. So you can see it takes a second for this world to render. Render means uh, how the world starts to unfold, so I can see. This was a good start. They got a nice stem. You can look around this house. Looks like they started building a second house. There's our entrance. Not much inside other than some torches though. That looks good. And there's one. It's group 22. That looks like a good jack-o'-lantern. Not much on the inside though. So then we're going to check out one more group. So we have 30 computers in our lab so this template works really well because there are 32 separate workspaces to choose from. So here's one that used orange stained glass, and they found some of the pumpkins. And then if we go inside, you can see they have lots of lights and lanterns. So something we can try as a teacher, if I press the M key, I can then go to world settings and change the clock to darkness. So now it's midnight, and then we can see how much of this is really lit up. So that makes it look interesting as well. I didn't turn on night mode for most students because they didn't get to the lights, but that's an example. So that was a fourth grade class, and students voted on the winner. I think 22 was our winner over there. Okay, and now we're going to check out a fifth grade class next. All right, now we're going to look at the second class that came in this morning, a fifth grade class, Ms. McLaren. So I'm going to sign in again. I started the server. Remember to sign in as a teacher. I'm going to connect. Now we'll see how the fifth graders did. So I'm going to teleport myself back to the beginning. 
So this is our spawn point. You can see that there's a checkerboard on the ground. I'm going to turn on speed. I always go to build mode so I can go up and quickly survey the area. So this is group number one. They had the beginnings of a good pumpkin here. Didn't quite get the black part to finish, but they did get to decorate the inside with some spider webs, some tables. So it looks like they spent time on the inside rather than finishing some of the outside. But that's a pretty good start. If they had some black, it would have looked good. Here's another one. This is group five. So they have a nice face. I like that they have the stem. They even have a sign. Spooky. All right. There's our lights on the inside. I like how they made it round because we talked about how pumpkins aren't square. Students tend to build in rectangles. Here's another good example. They even put some tombstones out in front. That's a nice touch. Little baby pumpkin next to the big pumpkin using their spider webs. Let's take a look inside here. Some glowstone. Let's look inside this other building. Uh, nothing on the inside, but that looks pretty good. So there's the two we have in this space. Let's go back. Check out groups 9 through 16. There's a very large pumpkin here. It's group 9. So they had a good beginning. It looks like they didn't quite have enough time. This is the challenge with build battles, is that you have limited time to try to finish this. So you have to use your time wisely and see if you can build something within the time limits. But it's a good start. And that's a good looking pumpkin right there. I don't think there was anything else in this. Oh yeah, here's one. This is a good example of biting off more than they can chew. So they have a very, very large pumpkin. It has the makings of something really unique. But in 30 minutes, they didn't quite have enough time to finish all this. And you can see they put some pumpkins around the edge. I'm not sure how they could have incorporated that into their design. Okay, here's our next group, 17 to 24. Lots of decorations around the outside. Looking for the front, where I can see the face. There we go. So, they have lots of decorations. The pumpkin is kind of halfway underground. It's an interesting design technique. But that's part of what build battles are fun, because everybody has a different idea, a different vision. So here's the haunted house, they said, that's next to their pumpkin. Lots and lots of torches. Let's look inside the haunted house. Come to the house. Ooh, it looks very creepy with spider webs. Looks like there's some cactus in there, too. Oh, that was pretty creative. This one didn't quite get finished. Another good example of how a pumpkin looks square instead of round. They could have taken out some of these corners to give it some roundness. And so that technique, you just sort of take out the edges. And then you can give some roundness to this. So just to show you an example of how you can take a rectangle and kind of make it curved. If we look at it from above. This is the group that won our build battle in fifth grade. This was a group of girls, so they have a nice looking pumpkin, lots and lots of decorations, spider webs, a very creepy environment that they have here. And if we look on the inside, they even decorated the inside. And you can see there's some of the pumpkins along the edge. So, for a limited amount of time, you can see how creative students can get, and I love seeing all the different variety of structures. And I think that's it. I don't know if we had one in 25 to 32. I don't think we did. And you can see it takes a little time to render. So the world takes a few minutes to unfold, especially if you're flying in the sky at high speed. So those are all our groups. And I think uh, our group 24 there were the winners with all the spider webs. But it was a good project. Thanks for watching.